All right. So uh, this is my question and the, my concerns, because sometimes cases are about people overstepping boundaries. So I don't understand. You're in the household with your fiance and you're creeping into her daughter's room. State. Defense? Daniel Bell for the defendant. All right, and are you Mr. Gonzalez? Daniel. You entered a plea of guilty to count one on February 7th. You applied for deferred adjudication. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, sir. Defense? We have, Your Honor, and I've reviewed the same with my client. All right, any objections to the PSI report state? No objections. Defense? No, Your Honor. Any witnesses state? None. Defense? Your Honor, yes, I would like to call Mr. Gonzalez. All right, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. Matthew All right, defense. Thank you very much, Your Honor. And just for the record, Your Honor, I did tender the report a, a copy of a mitigation report. Yes, and the court has reviewed the mitigation report. Thank you, Your Honor. So for the purpose of brevity, I I'm not going to ask him, you know, where did he grow up, that kind of stuff. The court already is well aware of it in both the PSI and the mitigation report. So I'm asking just some questions about what's going on, and then I'll ask you to grant his application. Sure. Okay. So okay. would you state your name for the record, sir? Matthew Robert Gonzalez. Okay. And you're the same Matthew Gonzalez that's been charged in this offense, right? I am. And they are, for lack of a better term, of sex crime, right? It is. And um, the judge knows exactly what happened, what's stipulated to the evidence, right? Yes. And um, first off, do you accept responsibility for what happened? I do. The full responsibility? I accept full responsibility. Have you ever tried to minimize your guilt? I have not. When the police uh, came in and started investigating the crime, what did you do? Uh, on it with them. Very and, and so the court knows you gave a full-throated confession of, of yes. everything that happened, right? Yes. And that was outside of the, the police patrol vehicle, right? Yes. And that was the night that you were, was that the night that you were arrested? Same night. And in fact, they didn't know about, about the, the sex assault count, right? That was basically self-confessed by you? Yes. Thank you. And um, tell the judge when, how long have you been on pretrial supervisions? I have been on pretrial supervision for the past year and a half. Okay. And where have you been working during that time, sir? I've been working as a diesel mechanic at Health Center of America on the truck service side. And what do you do there? Uh, I specialize in heavy duty trailer repair for the past year and a half. Uh, since then, my bosses have granted me uh, my own shop, purchased my own vehicle. Um, since then, I've learned um, since this charge, I've ceased uh, going to school and I've made this my, uh, my career, essentially. And what, what, is that for? what is it again? Uh, heavy duty trailer repair. Diesel mechanic is what the PSI says, right? Yes, diesel mechanic. Yes. Okay. And how much money do you make doing that? Uh, over a hundred thousand. And I saw on the PSI about seventy dollars per hour. Seventy dollars per hour. Is that me. accurate? That is accurate. That was accurate. That is accurate. Okay, and then let me ask you, sir. Um, you have been on what I would consider a high level of supervision, correct? Yes. Have you been wearing a GPS device? I have. And then, as part of the judge allowing you to go to work, did they establish a, a like what I would call a child safety zone around the uh, the mechanic shop? Correct. Right. And where is that mechanic shop? The mechanic shop, specifically where I work in, is about 100 or 200 feet away from the actual travel center itself. Um, so majority of my day, of course, when I walk in the morning, I have to walk through the shop, but majority of my day is spent is far away actually from the actual shop. So. And the reason why the court established that zone is is to keep you away from minor children, right? Yes, it is. As a condition of your pro of, uh, of your pre-child supervision, right? It is. Okay. And how many violations have you had during the time that you're on pre-child supervision? Zero. And how many times did you, I don't know, cut off your monitor? Zero. How many times did it go off in the middle of the night that you're not in compliance? Never. And I asked you how many violation reports you've had, right? Correct. You've never been in front of the judge where where you've done something bad and you had to and you had to explain what you did bad on pretrial supervision never and sir and then that high level of sup of supervision that you complied with if you were granted your application for deferred adjudication today would you continue on with that uh compliance i would do whatever the judge requesting to do no problem whatsoever what's your criminal history like i don't have one and um your father briefly he was a police officer for how many years uh well over 30. And then did this offense, 
kind of did he retire because of it? He did. He retired because of police uh, career behind him. Um, I actually hired him on. Uh, I actually have currently three trainees under me uh, since I actually trained. Uh, so let's back up. So your father works with you now? He does. Doing the diesel mechanic stuff? Yep, he's in the exact same bay as I am. And uh, we're literally with each other 24 7 at this point. And y'all live together? We do. Is he supportive of your well being? He is. Making sure that you uh, comply with with your pre child supervision conditions? He does. Would he help you comply with everything that you need compliance with if you were granted deferred adjudication today? Absolutely. And then as part of deferred adjudication, again, you've never denied that this happened, right? Correct. Right. And then are you motivated to, you're going to be required to go to some kind of sex offender therapy and treatment? Are you motivated for that? I am. As part of that, um, as part of that, you're going to be required to, to accept responsibility and, and participate in those sessions. Are you willing to do all that? I have no problem with it. Uh, one second, Mark. Yes. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell the judge as far as what you want to see happen today? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I'd, be, I'd be, and I think when you would be uh, forever grateful when we get to um, grant me deferred adjudication. Um, like I said, I've become a mentor in my job. I've trained before for Arizona. I have a uh, training right now this week from Oklahoma. I've trained all of the state of Texas as far as what I do personally. Um, our company is growing and growing. Um, they're heavily dependent on me. Uh, I would feel uh, extremely bad to have left them behind and left them without me and my presence there to, to uplift the environment and train the people that they require me to. Um, I, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Um, I feel like I let them down if I were to have, if I were to go away. So does, um, does this job have any contact with minor children? They do not. It's a truck stop uh, primarily. So uh, it's, you may know the only people that I have in bays are truckers um, and they are not allowed in bays and they're only there when they get off their vehicle and into the service center. I don't have any contact with them due to my uh, contract being specifically with Amazon. I only have contact with tow truck drivers and that's it. Um, I do not have any contact with any minor whatsoever in my dog. Okay, Your Honor, I think I, I, I think this is what I need to hear, so I will just stay silent. Sorry, okay. pass the All right, so uh, this is my question and the, my concerns, because sometimes cases are about people overstepping boundaries. All right. So I don't understand you're in the household with your fiance and you're creeping into her daughter's room. Now I saw the statement where the daughter is saying she consented. I saw the statement where the mom is saying this has happened before with somebody else. Right. So explain that to the court. Initially, your honor, that was not the case. Uh, I viewed this, this young girl at the time as an innocent child. I didn't expect any of this to ever happen in my life. I didn't, this is not my goal. Um, I was purely seeking to be a role model to her. Things became askew, and whether it was her past or my past, where we had been through, things happened the way they should not have happened. And I bear deep remorse for it. Uh, all of 2022 was extremely hard for me uh, dealing with that remorse. Um, 2023, I put all my faith in the Lord, and uh, I, I pray that He and you forgive me. And of course, the state, um, I don't have. Um, I am not going to stand here and say it was okay. I'm not going to stand here and try to evade what I did. I'm only here um, to let you know and all those witnesses know that uh, it's not me. That was not me. Uh, it's never what I meant to happen. Anything else, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. I'd like to um, point out that the complainant's mother is in the courtroom today. Yes. She's not supportive as far as, you know, relationships with him or anything like that. But I, 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 and I know you see in the PSI that she would like the application granted, not so they can get back together or anything weird like that, but because she feels like that's, you know, the appropriate punishment in, in her mind. I know that, that you know, it's up to the court, of course. But, you know, and, and judge, and just notably, 
we always take into account what victims, you know, um, I know at least in my dealings with the prosecutors on this and every other case, they always take into account what the victim wants. And that's what they want is they want the applications granted, Your Honor. So just, just so the court knows, and she's here and I've talked to her and she still feels that way. Um, I'm not gonna put her through anything, you know, as far as making her come up and tell you that, but that is definitely how she feels. Um, so with that, that's all I have as far as the presentation. I just like to argue to you. Okay, and I understand that the complainant is 15 and, you know, 15 to 17, whatever that gap means in maturity, whatever that gap means in um, emotional maturity. I know that's the cutoff, what the legislature had pla placed it at. But to do this in his fiance's house, with his fiance's daughter, I find that concerning because the fiance I'm, I'm assuming was somebody he's supposed to love and was in love with. But I'll, I'll hear your argument, counsel. Yes, Your Honor, and I think, and, I, and thank you, Judge, and thank you for for listening to us today. Um, I, I do agree with the court. That is that is very concerning. So, what do we do with with this man? I think his history and characteristics, though. Um, I don't think it calls for prison. I think we label him a sex offender. We make him register, of course. We put him on deferred adjudication for 10 years, Judge. And at that point in time, he's giving you that, that low cap back. And that cap, I would argue to you, is low for a reason. Um, and I think, and that's, you know, my dealings with the state, of course. And I think that, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a five-year cap on a, on a two to 20 range of punishment. So I think that if he... It's granted the application, and this man so much as jaywalks, Judge, he gives you back that cap, and you can send him for 20 years to prison um, for what he's done. I would just submit to the court, Your Honor, that based upon the history and the characteristics of this man, I think rehabilitation and, and, and supervision is the answer. It's not prison, Judge. He comes from a good family. He's done some good in his life as far as the Air Force and stuff like that. He's got a job, a tough job, um, and, and he's and he's, I think he's done well for himself despite the fact that he's in, he's in this major major amount of trouble this isn't a little you know marijuana case this is major stuff uh, and i do agree with the court it's it's concerning so what do we do i think we supervise him we we put him in front of dr ellie or the people that stop the sex offender treatment people we make him you know go through all that very arduous counseling that he needs to go through and i so and i ask that you grant the application judge for all that and state you're silent uh, the state is silent thank you very much Putting it on you, Judge. And, and we were very, very close. So, you know, I was, I was harping on them about a recommendation, but as the court, you know, I've also uh, seen the the 25 years for the for the other, you know, for the other shoot, the victim twice. That's that was their concern. And I understand that that's yours too. But Judge, I don't think prison's the right thing for him, though. I really don't. And for all those reasons that we talked about in the mitigation report and everything else, right? All right, have the mom come up here. May she approach her? Yes. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. All right. Did anybody want to ask questions or want me to ask questions? I can ask them just uh, however the court would prefer. You can ask questions. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Saldana. So now you've been called up here, right? And you recognize Matthew, right? Yes. And you all were in a relationship, is that correct? Yes. And at some point in time, he was having inappropriate relations with your daughter. Is that right? Yes. And then you know we're here today because the judge has Two, so the range of punishment was two to 20 years. We bargained down to two to five years in prison, right? Texas Department of Criminal Justice prison, right? Or probation, deferred probation. What would you like to see the judge do today? Asking concerns with my daughter um, in regards to her whole situation. Um, it has been over a year and a half um, to counseling and everything like that. Um, we both feel um, we would like to move forward, um, and we we both feel you know, we are okay with deferred um, probation. I mean, do you want to see him go to prison? To be honest, um, we would like to have him have a second chance. Um, he was never 
obviously disregarding the situation. Um, he was never bad to us. He is character wise, he's a very good person. I'm not sure why any of these things happen. Um, but deep down, I, I think we know that that wasn't his. Um, so we we discussed and we would you know would like him to have a second chance. And does your daughter want him to have probation? She does, yes. Yeah. Is Child Protective Services involved in your life or were they involved with yes. regards to this incident? Yes. And what has happened with that case? Um, the case was closed. Um, she, uh, everything was on my end. Was okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Any other witnesses? No, you are. All right. Ms. First, I'm recall this for April 6th. At that time, the court will make its decision. Okay, right. Court is calling 2022 CR 10839 State of Texas versus Matthew Gonzalez. I need parties to uh, who are not a part of this hearing to please whisper. Could I have announcement state? Prayer for the state. Good morning, Your Honor. Daniel De La Garza for the defendant. And are you Matthew Gonzalez? All right. So I ask that this case be reset from April 3rd because I wanted to. Um, think about the evidence that had been presented to me and make a decision. So there were a lot of um, things um, that the court uh, found compelling. Uh, this is what the court is going to do. Court is gonna find you guilty. Court will sentence you to three years in the prison give you credit for any time served. There's to be chapter 62 compliance. And there's to be no contact with the complainant or the complainant's family. Going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.